That's probably so gross. <laughs> I, I think they probably just got a whiff of every mouth sound you've ever... Uh... We're, do <laughs> We're doing ASMR from now on. Well, yeah, well, welcome welcome to Grindhouse Movie Club ASMR. Mm -hmm. You're just going to listen to me eat a wet sandwich. And I'm going to talk about movies like this. <laughs> All, that was all mustache, by the way. I don't even—I didn't say anything. So if you heard words, <laughs> the, the peppery scratches of your upper lip. Yeah, that—that's all on you. That's all on you. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoyed it. Was it, are you just? Were you just gonna crack a beer? Yeah. Oh. And spill. And spill. All over. I can't begin to describe how all over. Good well, thing there's hey, just stray paper up. towel on the floor here. I mean, that's you don't don't use that. Don't use that. I'm that's. It's, I use that to clean up some bong water. I'm telling you, you don't want that. <laughs> well, now it's got both substances on it. That's good for you. I mean, some at least I was here to, at least I was here to witness that go down because yeah. now I know for sure and I can vouch for you. Like this guy did not piss his pants just now. <laughs> that's that's Unless, all Sapporo. You know, additionally, my wiener is so far to the right. If that's the case, that I have a medical condition. That Sapporo was a bad Poro. I, yeah. It was a subparo. Ooh. See? Oh, I'm clever. Okay. So, all right. W welcome to Grindhouse Movie Club, <laughs> um, where we talk about movies and don't have a tagline for our podcast. Um, They're overrated. They are. They really are. Uh, <laughs> this week, we are, we watched Cabin Fever. 2002. 2002. And you'll, 2002. See, uh, you'll notice that uh, some people will say 2003, but that's because Lionsgate bought it and released it a year later. Oh. Uh you know what i see like a whole time i was like i thought it was 2002 it is on the imdb page and then yeah, then, and, yeah. and then um yeah and then when you provided me with that digital download it did say 2003 see yep here we are that mm. completely legal digital download yes uh thank thank you uh to the internet where, to my understanding, it is not illegal to download things. No. It's, but it uh, is illegal to upload them. It's the Wild West. I don't understand how anything works anymore. Yeah. I just do what I want until the FBI kicks my door down. And and kick they will. I'm sure. And kick they will. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, 2000. I, I was 12. I was 12 when this movie came out. And that's like the first thing I like to think about is like, how old was I? When this horror movie came out, and was this appropriate for me to be like watching alone in the basement? <laughs> well, I would have been ten, and I'm not sure I saw it until high school. Okay, well, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> yeah, no is a, is not a good answer. Not There's appropriate. There's a lot of scene. shit going on in that movie that, yeah. Mainly the fingering. The fingering. The fingering is what the only thing I remember, and the fingering will be the only thing I remember. Um, <laughs> I, I, I only know about this, well, I, obviously because I'm an adult and I can watch whatever I want, but like as a kid, I had that friend who, he would like, he had an older brother, and his older brother would see a movie with tits in it, and he'd be like, hey, check out these tits, and then that kid would come to school and be like, guys, everybody's convening at my place after school, mm -hmm. I got something to show you. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, never anything good? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's always the boobs in Clockwork Orange. Yeah, great. Fast forward through the whole movie to see the boobs. To see the boobs during Wicked. the rape scene. During basically the yeah. rape scene. Yeah, uh, and see, when you fast forward the movie, you don't, like, you don't know that's that's what that scene is. You just see the boobs. Unless you're pausing directly on the boobs, you could suss out the context of that scene within would, 10 seconds. He was pausing directly okay. on the boobs. Yeah, it that's was like how a fast you forward, and yeah. then he'd be like, pause. Boobs. That's how you. That's how you circumvent uh, the knowledge that you're showing children something yeah, horrible. I, I I never watched that movie, and I never will. I'll tell but you. I've seen every tit in that movie. It's not a bad movie. Uh, somebody gets clubbed to jet to death with a giant with a giant penis. Yeah, that um, does happen. It's not even clubbed. It like rocks, and he like pushes it, and it like tips over and bonks him on the head yeah. or something weird like that. It's, that's not. I'm not even sure that's the worst thing that happens in that movie. There are worse things that happen. But it's not a bad film. <laughs> it's yeah. very artistic. Art uh, house. When you look past all the horrifying things that occur. <laughs> um, so anyway, that, he, that kid was like, hey, fingering mm -hmm. in this movie. Check That's it the out. the worst kind of fingering. Yeah. I, by far. Oh, oh yeah. it's. Whew. And I got to tell you, 
I don't care. These are supposed to be high school students, I assume, or like just graduated high school students. Something like so that. So you're talking about 18 or 19, fine. And this chick is telling all these stories about all the banging that she's done and crazy drugs and shit, or whatever, drinking. But you're going to tell me that that guy is not well-versed enough in fingering to tell the difference between a the hole that you want and a dirty, bloody, infected hole right to the side of it? Yeah, that that's the thing, like... He, you may not know where the vagina is, but you know it's not on the thigh. Yeah, and you're going to know the difference in feeling as well. When he pulled his hand out, there was so much muck on there. Yeah. That's not even what a period looks like. I'm, I'm beginning to think, like... Unless you have a, like a medical condition. I'm, I'm wondering if, like... If... And, like, we, this is the first... Like, this should not be the first part of the movie we discuss, <laughs> but, like... We got to get it out of the way. It's what, important. I'm, I'm wondering if... if if there was a hole there or if he like like play-doh just kind of like oh he created it and it was like oh that feels about right sure mm, well that's even worse because it did look like just two fingers jabbed into into like a pie i couldn't tell there was so much blood everywhere yeah that's true that's true there was a lot of blood um, okay. okay also how do you not you're getting woken up by somebody tickling your uppers and your lowers and you don't go hey there's something going on down there you might not want to be a part of <laughs> Yeah, that's fair warning, um, but also, like, you should know, I think, when it feels like somebody's digging into yes! your flesh. <laughs> yeah, you when should be like, hey. digging all up in your literal guts. I, I don't think, think this is the activity we should be participating in at the moment. Ow, why is the bed so wet? Get me a Band-Aid. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, the bed. The bed's so wet. What's I didn't know my on? first time was supposed to hurt like this. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, that that's that's there in that movie. That's yeah. uh, that's the weird. That's the and for six minutes we just talked about that. Yep. Um, I'm so, trying to think of what the most noteworthy part of that movie is, and that definitely is oh, one. Like but uh, the I think the campfire. Well, the campfire story about the the bowling alley murderer. Yes, which is a true story. I learned. Oh, yeah. I was uh, fucking around in the trivia section on this IMDb page for this film, and I found some interesting information. Okay. okay. Apparently, that's a that guy got four life sentences for that crime. Nice. Which is the appropriate number of life sentences for what it, you did. It, it it is, but also at the same time, it's like. Nobody. What are you gonna like? Half electrocute him four times? <laughs> uh, like just just say he's there till he's dead. You know? Yeah. No. It's then you you reincarnated as like a screwdriver, <laughs> and you go back to jail. Y yeah. <laughs> there's somewhere there's just like a, a toolbox that's just jail for bad screwdrivers. Yeah. It's the one in the garage at your grandparents' place that you've never seen open once. Yeah. And it's got screwdrivers that have like little ends on them to like things you've never seen before. Yeah. Like two prongs. And it's under a stack of tires. <laughs> That's screwdriver jail. Screwdriver jail. Yeah. Um, so okay, that, that so that actually happened. Yes, that was a real thing. Um, the head in the ball return, I think, uh, didn't happen. Oh, that's weird because like you go that far, why wouldn't you just put that in there? Yeah. Or at least use the ball polisher on it. For but fun. <laughs> Because his head's bald. How could you not? <laughs> right. That is Eli Roth's brother, by the way. Yes, I did see that in the credits. Um, Adam Roth. Isn't that weird? Also, his other brother is one of the FBI agents at the end. Or the whatever agents that come and kill everybody. Is he? Okay. I, th I, I thought the body at the end. So, I mean, obviously. We right, warned you. Right, right, right at the end of the movie, yeah. there's a dead body in the water and the kids are collecting that jug. Yeah. That guy kind of looked like Eli Roth a little bit, too. Um, th he's one of the three that show up like the in the like suits and hats, and they all have the same uniform, to the lemonade stand. That old guy, mm -hmm. and then his two whatever compadres. But the guy, the guy in the water, he just wasn't like another brother. That's the fucking main character from the movie. Is it? Yeah, he gets dumped there by the deputy. When? Yeah. At, at what part? I, I must have been like writing something, they do or that. I looked away. Because like, I couldn't figure out who that guy was. I'm like... That's cool. It's just like a dead body in the water. They do the weird hospital scene with the hallucinatory rabbit. Oh, and then okay. um, there's they're talking at the front desk and he's like, I'll take care of it. And so and then it cuts to the scene where the deputy's got the bandage on his head. Mm. That fucking idiot deputy, the worst police officer. W. Olin. Oh my god. Look, I first of all, his name's Olson. 
Is it? Winston Olsen. And it's important to note that W. Olsen yeah. ain't a cop. <laughs> Look at him. That's a, that's what I wrote the second I saw it. Like, that ain't no cop. How come the police in, in the backwoods are always scum? I didn't like how many times he used the word pussy. That and party. Oh, yeah. Big Both. party guy. You get, get some pussy? Yeah. Pussy at the party or the party pussy. And if, if you have, if you're not gonna watch the movie, this kid looks like he's like 17, and yeah. he's got like a mustache. The like, word, the the first mustache you grow once you realize you're able to grow one. Oh yeah, it's it's, and then there's like a scene where the like the the booze party he was he was with at underage kids. As, like he's like giving a 40 to like a 10 year old. Yep. Oh my and like, god. And really encouraging her to drink more than she's comfortable drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 2002 is a different time. It was. And in the backwoods, it's 2002 forever. <laughs> if not earlier. Look, I'm going to just say, don't. There's many reasons to not go in the woods. And, yeah. And this <laughs> this cop the, being like in charge of things is a good reason <laughs> to not. That's not the face you want to see when your friends are dying of flesh eating disease. Uh, so his last name is Olsen, and that's a double joke. Because one of the characters, Bert, the guy that shoots squirrels because they're gay. Yeah. Which. <laughs> Is my favorite line. This movie has a lot of very good dialogue. I took I took a lot of notes. Most of it is from Bert. It is some of it's from uh, that blonde guy. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. They have the best lines in the film. Yes, they do. Uh, Anyway, Bert's got a shirt on that says, uh, "What does it say?" Let's look it up for a sec because I wrote it down because I knew I was going to forget the date. Uh, Ripe on six thirteen oh four. That is the date that the Olsen twins turned eighteen. Oh. <laughs> and this movie came out two years before that. Oh. <laughs> That's dirty. The countdown had already begun. <laughs> Little That's... did you know, Bert was well first in 4chan, which I should not have been on 4chan at that age. Oh my god. Because yeah. that was where that's where I learned about the fucking Olsen twin turn 18 countdown. And I was like, this is, I'm like 13 at the time. And I'm like, yeah, this is shady behavior. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing you at like a, I don't know why, like a, a library, like a public library. Like, <laughs> what's going on? And you just kind of like, it, it reminds me of the scene from that movie. Um, uh, it's like you, me, and some other guy. And it's like the two kids are, are sitting at the computer and they're like, doing like a sexy talk and it ends up being like some old lady and the guy's like i want to poop in your butt yeah and, and we just poop. we poop back and forth forever yeah i, I, I pic- can't remember i picture you on 4chan like that with like an older brother or an older guy <laughs> and like it's like look at this check this out <laughs> they turn 18 in june <laughs> do you and you know what that means right you don't oh well they're ready well hold on let me click a little further <laughs> this, this guy explains it <laughs> I feel like if you went on 4chan at a public library, you get put on a watch list. Yeah. Right away. Absolutely. I think you get your your, your computer time taken away. You, you, you get put you, the list you get put on is the do not allow to be on the computer list. So yeah, it's a fucking guy. I don't know why Eli Roth had a weird obsession with the fucking the last name Olson at the time. Yeah. But he peppered it through his movie pretty effectively. He sure did. Uh, can we talk about Dennis? Dennis. Dennis the fucking menace? Oh, Pancake Man, kid? Yeah. Fuck that. Just bu- just taking bites out of people? Yep. Uh, my favorite thing to do is bite hands. And also, low-key, just know all the karate. First of all, uh, you go to... You go to a convenience store, which is essentially what it is, mm-hmm. and how the fuck are you supposed to know not to sit beside him on the swing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad comes out like it's just common knowledge. We don't sit on the swing with Dennis. Yeah, because Dennis is going to bite you. I would avoid that kid primarily because of his haircut. I don't want to be yeah. seen near that. Honestly, it, it's, it was a bowl cut and a mullet put together. At the same time. The two worst haircuts in human history. It was it was party at the front and just uh, <laughs> stay away from that guy at the front. A terrorist <laughs> attack at the back. <laughs> oh, my God. But I um So, like, I was, as I was writing notes, uh, like, I was writing like, oh man, that old cashier man. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I wrote right here, I want to be the old cashier man. And then he <laughs> and said then something <laughs> that made me immediately write, do not, and with several <laughs> arrows pointed upwards. And I had to go, wow. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, we got to draw the line somewhere on this podcast. So the word won't be said, 
Thank you very much for not saying it. But it starts with an N. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you're gonna you just go watch the movie. It's in, yeah. it's within the first like ten minutes of that movie. Oh, one of the one of the better comedic turns in a horror movie, though. Yeah, I would for say. real. I, because uh, then black people show up, and he's quite friendly to them. Yeah, I, and they I, they reciprocate that friendliness. I think there was like fist bumps or there something. There were there were fist bumps and complex handshakes. But like. Holy moly! I was like, "What a friendly!" Yeah. He's like, don't don't drop that jar of fox piss. Now you have every fox in the community. You have friends you didn't know you had. Knock the whole darn thing over. And then, oh, he just yeah drops it like <laughs> it's hot. Yeah, yeah. The whole floor falls out from underneath you there in that sentence, and yeah, you go, does. "I'm not sure what to grab onto here." And like, really happy that because I understand that Eli Roth had some difficulty selling the script because of that line. <laughs> Which makes sense. Yeah, it does. It, but yeah, absolutely, really happy that he stuck his foot down on that and was like, "I'm not, I'm not taking that out. I don't care how long it takes me to make this movie. That's got to be in there, because that's so good." <laughs> it's 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 like a it's the, definitely a, a shock. Absolute last thing you would expect from a kindly old convenience store owner. Right. It's just blatant, blatant racism <laughs> but then it, it but it's not it gets weirdly turned around at the yeah, end the end, look, the end of the movie the last seven minutes of this movie i wrote and the biggest capital letters i did not see the last seven minutes of this movie coming <laughs> because everything like everything you didn't expect yeah there it is the, 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 the last thing you expected for the whole movie was right right there in front of you and that's uh uh I enjoy every second of that movie. I forgot, actually. And I remember I texted my friend this. I forgot how good it was fully. And I enjoyed every second. I you, still do. You know what? Having this be my first time actually watching it. Didn't know that. Very good. I love it. I, I Well, I only saw the fingering part. And I went, that's not fingering. Yeah. What's this? Mm -hmm. uh, and immediately. Well, the rest of the movie makes the girl's fingering all worth it. Um, first fucking five minutes of that movie, I could have told you twenty feet away that that dog was dead. Yeah, uh, you know sure what? Sure as shit, don't need to go all the way up and lift his fucking arm up to see his exposed cavities. I wrote, never seen a dead dog, but that's a dead dog. Yeah, I know what a dead dog looks like. Yeah, I'll, I don't have dead. to explore further. That dog was liquid. Yeah, he was liquid in the middle. It was goo, and then somehow it got it exploded all over dude's face. Which, yeah. And he's just waving the meat in front of the dog, like, come on now, come on, I got meat. <laughs> dog's not moving, and yeah. he's, he's not concerned. If not you get close enough concerned. to a dog to, to dangle meat in front of its face enticingly, you're going to be able to tell whether it's dead or not. The, the tail's going to wag, whether or not it's like yeah. it's, it's trying to play it cool, like the tail moves. Yeah, and it could be asleep, and that's still going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, yeah, so dead dog for sure. Yep. Um, I have it written as idiot woods homeless. <laughs> and and so that that's the guy who who like comes he gets shot right by mm -hmm. um what's his name with the f Bert Bert mm -hmm. never forget never gonna forget that name love that f you hat me too love I was, that I was, fucking ripe on shirt yeah um but so th that's the guy right he gets sprayed in the face and then yeah so yeah that, so then Bert's like yeah it's no stay right there. Well, no, no, the dude like falls into a hole and Bert runs. But yeah. before that, he's like, I'm going to get you water. Hold up. Yeah. Stay there. Then it's like, what? Yeah, Ten, time passes. It's like eight hours later yeah. and the guy finally is like, hey, Time for sure passes. Hey, I'm, I'm here. And he like <laughs> finally like wanders up to the house. There's no a, way it took him that long to get to the cabin. Like, yeah. It's, he Clearly, if it took him that long, he's like, did he even want the help? <laughs> Was he even? Like, he's like, finally, all right. Let's go. Oh, Where's man. the help? I've been waiting on this water for what seems like a long time. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, though, uh, somebody shoots me because that's how badly they want to be away from me. <laughs> I'm not going to their cabin. Yeah, no, I don't care real. how much fucking help I need. Yeah. Oh, that's their cabin? I'm going to walk in the opposite direction. <laughs> that's the cabin of a dick. Yes. <laughs> a real dickhead slit staying there. <laughs> I'd even like write a sign like a dickhead sleeps here, <laughs> just so everybody in the community knows if you're sick. Yeah, this guy's gonna put a bullet in the ground before he gets you a cup of water. Yeah, it's the same as a no pr trespassing sign, except I'm doing it for your benefit. Oh fuck! Oh, the dude with the soul patch. Uh, I forget his. It was like G Gitter. Grim. Grim. Yeah. 
That's Goober. I have, yeah. a, I, have a, I have a cat named Grim. She's sleeping on the bed. Well, we're we're keeping you know the cabin fever dream alive with a cat named Grim. What was his his actual name? That was Justin. You, you better off with Grim. Yeah. If you're if look if your name's Justin, stick to you Grimm. are a problem child. You you made it the teacher's life hell and, and you probably have freckles. That's so fucking accurate. I, I went to school with a kid named Justin and that's yep. I just described the Justin I went to school with. He started smoking in tenth grade and he taught himself how to play slap bass like flea from the red hot chili peppers. That's Justin right there. That's all um, I, I remember also he got he used to get way into bloody knuckles. For those of you who don't know what bloody knuckles is, you take your hand and you make a fist, you put your fist down on a table. And then somebody else fires a quarter at your knuckles. And then um, the prize for the winner? Uh, the bloodiest knuckles. And, oh, mm. You get to be like, hey, look, these are my bloody knuckles now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Isn't that cool? In grade 10, in the hallway, right before class? It's, it's good to make your knuckles bloody with one of the dirtiest things on the planet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Something that's probably fallen between a stripper's tits at some point. Yeah, you should probably make a wound on your body with that. Yeah, and subsequently handled by teenagers. Yes, absolutely. Who are just learning what showers are. Mm, nasty. Yep. Um, Stick that in my body, though. The last time I ever saw the Justin I went to school with, <laughs> uh, he was... He was buying scratch tickets and just scratching the code to scan. Yep. And he was just standing there at the counter like, scan this one. So I watched this interview with Danny Trejo where he talks about uh, what it was like being in prison. Mm. And I don't remember what his sentence was. He got like, uh, I think it was like 10 years for something anyway. For sure he did. Uh, He was talking about um, how they make wine. And they essentially, it's by fermenting fruit in the toilet, in your Mm. cell. Mm -hmm. And it has a name, but I can't remember the name of it. But um, he says in the interview, if you're drinking this shit, (laughs) you're an alcoholic. Yeah. That's their period. There's there's no two ways about it. If you're buying lottery tickets and scratching the code at the counter instead of enjoying the fun of a crossword, you're a gambling addict. Absolutely, you are. The, you don't have a choice. That's what you are. And this, and he was like 18. He like, oh great, he got yeah. in early. Yeah, oh yeah, he did. Jeez, fucking. At least do the jumble, like what? Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I don't know. Like, go in your in your low riding hatchback and <laughs> do the jumble, and then come back in. You don't have to go home. No. But you just, you can't stand at the counter. I'm sorry. No, because then you're holding me up. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck behind, and usually they're older than 18, for God's sakes, <laughs> but behind some, and there's one downtown at this max that I go to who's Irish, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he's in there, I would say, three out of the five times that I've been in there, uh, just buying lottery tickets and then going over to the scanner and scanning them and bringing them back. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like ten at a time. Yeah, what are you doing to yourself? That's that's the that's the exact same behavior. And it's like seven in the morning. Sleep in if this is your whole day. That's that's a whole other set of life problems. <laughs> he's that guy's trying to solve problems with problems. Yeah, he's creating problems to solve other ones. That's worse. Yeah, he's yeah. incurring debt. <laughs> to to get out of debt, it's a uh, real damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's like remortgaging your house to pay your mortgage. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so the soul patch guy, I want to say he had maybe one of the best lines in the entire film. Which one? Uh, what was his name? His name was like Doctor. Was Dog? Doctor Dog or something? Doctor Mambo. Doctor Mambo. And then the Beautiful girl, name. The for girl's a dog. like, he's a doctor, like like a <laughs> yeah. physician or a or a professor, and he goes, yeah, yeah he's, he's a, a doctor, doctor <laughs> of be or a, yeah, he's a professor, professor of being a dog. Ooh, face. Yeah. Oh my god. What a weirdo coming out of the woods. Right. You can tell he wasn't like. What was he doing? He said he had four thousand dollars worth of equipment outside his tent. Yeah. What was he doing there? I don't know. With a dog and a pound of weed. Right? It was, it, that was a big bag. It was. And who the fuck is smoking a stranger's weed? Who in this day and age is going to smoke a stranger's weed? I mean, chances are you got your own. Yeah, But absolutely. you're right, because you don't know what he put in that. Exactly. And he just came out of the woods. Yeah. Had a soul patch, and <laughs> and he said the words... Yeah, he's the professor of being a dog. Ooh, face. As if that was the 
heaviest insult ever iterated. He also looked like he was in The Offspring. Yes, he did. Yes, or Sum 41. Sum 41, uh, you know what? I'll even I'll even go as far as maybe Blink-182. Yeah. Like a Blink-182 cover band. He's, yeah, Blink-183. <laughs> Definitely from that era. Uh, I like that Eli Roth puts himself into his own movies. He does it a lot. Y- yeah, he does. And I think it's pretty cool. Like, fuck it. Get it in while you can. Yeah, yeah. He's a real Stan Lee. And, like, you're living the dream. Kevin Fever... Uh, was one of the highest grossing horror movies that Lionsgate had released up to that point. And it was beaten by Saw, which makes sense, given the time period. Fair enough. But that shit was made for like a million dollars. Oh, yeah, for sure. The, the, and it was like you couldn't you couldn't tell? No. There, well, I mean, there wasn't much to like to do, right? Like Cabin, Woods. Yeah. Gore. Yeah. I don't know how much fake blood you can buy for like a million bucks, but like you, they, they did it. They did it well. Look, yeah. The effects they got, like... That's a crazy low amount of money for, a, like, a larger budget film. And it it's, like, it's weirdly in this limbo between... Because it doesn't feel like a B-movie at all. Mm. But it doesn't feel like a Hollywood blockbuster. Like, there's some more authenticity there. And I think a lot of that has to do with the practical effects, which I'll always argue is better than CG. I don't give a shit. I, I do appreciate them. They're, they're a lot grosser. Yes. They're a lot grosser. And they require effort and thought. Yeah. Whereas, you know, it's not the same as, oh, uh, we'll fix that in post, and then hiring five Asian people to make it look good. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it, it always looks shiny. I don't know. It, yeah, it, it does. I don't know what about CG, like why things need to be shiny to be CG. Mm. But everything looks is just like oh, no idea. Did they just polish that monster? He looks. <laughs> he looks very shiny. They gave me a little spit shine before this take. For real, they did. A fucking so that's why and CG like heavy CGI. It looks good if you're doing a film about water. Yep. Because everything's already wet. Absolutely fine. Bad choice for Boba Fett, <laughs> where you're on a desert planet. Because mm. I can tell. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. As can everyone else. Although, I guess with Star Wars, that's not the first thing I'm thinking of is, like, I want it to be realistic. Yeah, because then you get, like, dudes in, like, big foam costumes and they're like... Yeah. And then you're just like, this is Jim Hansen's The Muppets. (laughs) And... That poor man got sick and died. Yes, he did. But, I mean, he could have not died. He could have had medicine. Yeah. He was like, eh. That's the first anti-vaxxer ever. Yeah. Jim Hansen could have had medicine. And Kermit would still sound good today. Yeah, it would. Doesn't matter. It wouldn't sound like, yeah, weird sounding Muppets. <laughs> Family Guy joke. Um, oh, shit. I also, I noted um, <clears throat> how they were like, fuck this this guy with the soul patch until he had the weed. Yeah. And they're like, oh, cool. Let's hear him out. He's got weed. Yeah. And then he pulls out the most. The, the like, tiniest pipe. Little metal crack-esque pipe. Yeah. And they're like. Sure did resemble sure. a crack pipe. Definitely sure thing. did. We'll oh. just share our saliva on this. The, the, the most crackiest of pipes. Thank you, Woodsman. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for bringing us this. Um, the main character is the weirdest guy in the world for a bunch of reasons. Okay. Okay. Um, I to be like, so it's very obvious from the beginning he's trying to bang this blonde chick. Mm. Um, so she rests her head on his shoulder while they're driving to the cabin. And then Bert does the same thing. And he doesn't flinch at all. So he's got her on one shoulder and Bert on his other shoulder. And it took like a, what I thought was like something somewhat romantic and made it just a group activity for her friends. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't affect him despite the fact that he's trying to get his dick in <laughs> with this chick. Yeah, for real. He's, uh, I now mean, don't, that's, it, that's, he's a player. That's the game. Yeah. Man. So if, if one of my friends, one of my guy friends rested their head on my shoulder, that's hilarious. Yeah. Just fine with me. Uh, not when I got a soft chub because I'm being touched by the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd bring up a lot of confusing feelings for me. Uh, also, Bert in that truck had a Game Boy Advance. I don't know if you noticed that. I did not notice that. It was that. in his lap, and it was only for like two seconds. You get to see it. This but Bert character, he seems like a... He's the best guy. He seems like an all right guy, but then he becomes... A, he, like, he begets, he gets worse and worse over the movie. Like, how he didn't tell anybody about the dying guy in the woods. That... I really shot him. Yeah, but he was also like <laughs> a sick dude, and his face was melting. And he that 
He didn't mention it at all. He was yeah. just like normal day in the woods. Fair enough. You'd think even even if you were to omit the fact that you shot the guy. Mm. Hey, there's a fucking the sickest man I've ever seen <laughs> over by the creek. You guys want to see something fucked up? <laughs> Go down to the creek, but don't get too close. Yeah, please, God, don't get too or, close. Or, like, I saw a monster man in the woods. I saw a goopy face monster man. Yeah. Uh, let's leave. And then they go, oh, this, 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 you've been listening to that Supernatural podcast too much. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Down in the woods. You, oh, you just watch too many horror movies, man. Um, also, with the main character. Now, this is the thing about sensing tone. And I understand that people don't necessarily know how to do that all the time and it doesn't make you autistic but that's a group of people who can't sense tone <laughs> um i get to a cabin after a long drive with groceries and uh i don't i'm there with my girlfriend and a bunch of my friends my girlfriend and i go directly into the bedroom uh we don't fuck around with the groceries or anything we just go straight in there mm. if one of my friends came in and like burst the door open without knocking and was like, who's up for a dip? <laughs> That's not going to be met well. Yeah, no, probably not. How could, how do you not know what's happening behind that door? Yeah, for they real. They beelined for that room. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, they didn't say anything. They were very discreet about it. But that, it's like, peace out. Oh, they're either changing or they're they're doing a, the horizontal mommy-daddy wrestling <laughs> uh, match. Mommy, daddy, horizontal time. And then so awkward trying to explain to this girl that he likes her. Mm. And like nothing about this guy, this character was easy socially. It was all painful and difficult. Even talking to the fucking deputy for the first time, that was like the most casual that he was. Mm -hmm. And it was still awkward. It was like he was ignoring things that he didn't want to hear from the deputy's mouth. He didn't say fuck all about partying for the most part. I don't know what to say about that. That's just a weird guy to have around. Yeah. This is the same guy who, uh, who when they were doing it, she reversed, reverse Uno reversed him, right? Uh, what? Well, they were, he was on top of her and then. All of a sudden, oh! All of a sudden, it was the other way yeah. around. And then he if got you, it in the. If you catch my drift. And then he got it in the old. That's that's the same scene you're talking about, right? Same guy. That's the who's up for a dip. But I'm talking about Paul, the kid with the brown uh, hair. Right. Yeah, that was a really awkward scene where that. Yeah. Like he's a cop behind him, truck covered in blood. Yeah. No. Hey, man, you guys have really been partying. Yeah. Red flag <laughs> right there that he didn't. Even I don't even if he if he looked at the truck, if he cared about the truck. He did eventually look at it. Yeah, and that was up. like it was like the most casual response ever to a truck mangled and covered in blood. Yeah, oh you got some look you got a dinger there. A little fender bender, huh? Now there is a chance that because they're out in the country, he would have assumed it was just like animal blood or something. Like they're hunters mm. and they hit an animal. Not like that though. <laughs> Yeah, it would a be a... Of, and it's on the inside, too. It would be a stretch, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that, that sick dude, just like... Mm-hmm. Just they, throw up blood everywhere. Yeah, that's... um. Yeah, oh, burn that truck. That truck gets burnt. Absolutely. I'm not going in that truck. I don't care how much you spray it down. Yeah. You could hit it with Lysol for three hours. Oh, oh, what's that little speck right there? You ever seen crime scene footage? They run that black light over top of something. You could have washed the sheets fifteen times. Oh dude. yeah, there's still semen there. They're gonna they're gonna find a fiber or uh, they're gonna find a sperm cell or something. Yeah, you know, fingerprints. I, mm, mm -mm. Oh my god, God help you if it's a, if it's a spermy fingerprint too. I wish they had luminol. But they didn't need luminol here. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the right. crime scene was very much in, in play. <laughs> Uh, it was still an active crime scene. Yeah, yeah. There was still crime to be had still. Like, <laughs> the, the cops got brought in early, and frankly, I think the crime could have commenced further had had the, the cop not shown up. Uh, but that, yeah, no, I agree. That's It was that whole thing. Like, he just wasn't listening to what he was like. No. Oh, yeah, that girl over there. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. concerned with somebody else fucking. And, and like, he wasn't even like, hey, don't look at her. Or, like, hey, that's that's my gal. No, no mention. Yeah. The guy's just like, oh, oh so you really party. Mm -hmm. There's one girl. Shit. <laughs> oh, I, and you just go, yeah, I don't know. We hit the truck with a bat. 
We had to scare him off with a bat. Oh, yeah, so you hit him? No, no, we just scared him off. The blood, though, we scared him. <laughs> we scared we him good. We scared the blood right out of him. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going through my notes here and trying not to be dead silent. Oh, well, I like, uh, even, yeah, so like when the sick guy showed up, I thought their reaction to the sick guy was like still very 2020. Like, chasing oh, them yeah. With, chasing them with the bat. Like, get out of here, you sick son of a bitch. That's what the fuck I was going to say. Like, it's weird how you find, uh, like, accurate depictions of COVID era long before COVID. Right. If I saw somebody who clearly had COVID, I would be pointing a rifle at them as well. For real. For real. I'd have no problem with, yeah, you're coughing up a storm and I could tell it's one of those wet coughs and you go, I can't taste. Yeah. I might threaten you with a bat if you're trying to get into my cabin. For real. For real. I um, just might. Have, have have some decency if you're sick. Just stay just away. Like, yeah. Social stay distancing, promptly away. man. I don't care how much help you need. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be cold and cruel in this situation. I got grandparents. I really enjoyed the scene where they like make their friend sleep in the out in the the shed. Yeah, and they, they were like, <laughs> "Karen, I'm sorry. We just don't want to get it." Yeah. <laughs> and then like they they the, the other guy's like, "Karen, please." Yeah. <laughs> and then they come back and she's like smoking a cigarette and she's like, "Close the door. I don't want to get anyone sick." <laughs> yeah. It's very it's, relatable in 2020. Yeah, it's a, that's a very realistic depiction. <laughs> My friend Joe got COVID last week, and uh, conversely, they still asked me if I wanted to come over on Friday, and I was like, oh, you're just getting out of quarantine? I'll give it a bit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. I had, uh, it was like some lady came into my work, and she was like, yeah, I'm quarantining tomorrow, and we kind of like took a big old step back and sanitized yeah. our bodies. Yeah. Like, My uh, coworker has a story about his wife's work where uh, a guy came in um, who was sick. He had taken a test that he got from that place of work, which means, and it tested positive. Mm. But in the meantime, he was concerned about it enough to actually pick up a test from work. But before that, he came in, put his lunch in the fridge, and mingled. Because she saw him have to go to the fridge to take his lunch out when he left after it came back positive. <laughs> Why wouldn't you care more right away? I don't. People don't understand how illness works. I guess. No, you, and, you, you don't get ill when you when you're ready to be ill. That's exactly. Oh, I'm not actually sick until the positive test. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. That's yeah. what actually taking the test is. What made it positive in the first place? It's 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 Schindler's test. <laughs> no, it's so shit. <laughs> I mean, uh, you now, know. Schindler and Schrodinger are two very different people. <laughs> yeah, they had a couple, they had a different set of skills, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's Schrodinger's test, not yeah. uh, not not a dead cat in a box, you, you, no. You could be positive and negative at the same time until you look. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. You're not sick until you actually enter quarantine. Oh my god. That's, uh. Yeah, that's um, where we're at. So, I don't yeah, care yeah, all that much. But... Yeah, people are, people are brilliant i like this whole uh this trucker thing that's going on mm -hmm. we got like uh slow rolling trucks rolling Waters through. are blocked right off i think my favorite thing i gotta i gotta show you was um i saw on twitter it was like people were just tearing people apart on the news mm. uh and i i retweeted it because it was just it was it was good. It was just good stuff on the news yeah oh you got how do magnets work right there i see that yeah like that's like how how do magnets work? That's like uh that's like old school stuff. I don't think people will actually understand that reference. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy was on the news and he and he says the only thing police need to worry about is God's judgment. But this man is wearing two sweaters with hoods on, and on top of those hoods he's got a hat. So it's like the only thing police need to worry about is God's judgment. Man who doesn't understand how hat works. <laughs> But he's, yeah, he's got a hat on top no, of two amazing. sweater hoods. And Here's my thing, right? They choose who to interview. Oh, yeah, they which do. Which means they saw him probably from across the street and were like, this will be good. Oh, yeah, that guy. He looks ignorant. Let's get <laughs> let's get him on TV. Exactly. And then there's this other quote from a guy. He's like, I'm going to jail forever if it means freedom. <laughs> Oopsies. Oopsies, you man. might want to look up the dictionary definition of freedom. Yeah, for real. Because it ain't jail. I like it. 
Well, good. I'm yeah. glad that they're they're getting theirs on a website that they don't even probably know how to use. Yeah. Uh, so, so my point is, times are changing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the times they are a change. I, that wasn't my point, but I just wanted to make it anyway. That's fine. What are you, uh, Bob Dylan now? For real. Uh, these times they are a changing. Um, I I noted here uh, at about forty minutes. 40, you got time codes down? Yeah, 40, 47 minutes into the movie, almost exactly, is the fingering. <laughs> right at 40. Right at 47, 47 minutes in. 47. Okay. Is the, is, that is the fingering. So you could do 46.59. Yep. And then, you know, if you don't want to be traumatized for the remainder of your existence, yeah, fast go right ahead to like, yeah, 48.59. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then you'll be like, oh, well, why... Why why is she so upset? What's wrong? Yeah. I don't understand why people talk about this movie like it's so gross. <laughs> For real. For real. What's Weird. And NBD. You get the like the the, the forty seven minute cut where they just cut that, that minute out of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um They use a physical roadmap to find a cabin. I don't think if you put a map in my hand I would know what the fuck to do with it. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things on a map. There um, are tons. There's topography half the time. Yeah, for real. Uh, there's like topography. Sometimes there's like rural routes. And yeah. Those are just roads that go, who fucking knows? Yeah. And a lot of them are mostly dirt and you can't tell where it begins and ends. It's like, is, am I on a driveway? Yeah. Is this, is this a highway? Am I, I am driving down a hiking trail right now? I haven't seen a car in years. <laughs> it's just dust and coyotes. I kind of wish that I... See, my problem is I wouldn't know where to place myself if you gave me a map. Mm -hmm. You give me a map of my area. Chances are if I need a map, I don't know where the fuck I am. So giving me a map that doesn't have like a mall map that you are here, little red dot. Yeah. I'm not going to have any idea. Yeah. And, and But the problem with that is like you would need a lot of maps. Tons. Yeah. You All would, kinds. You need a book full of maps to like take, take a step, flip the page. I know I'm here. Okay. Okay. When was the last time you saw like a, a map of a region? Uh, uh, the last one I can picture was being pulled down on like one of those <laughs> things. Yeah, <you, laughs> fucking geography class in tenth grade. Yeah, you like snap it, and then they, yeah. it stays down. And then you, when you pull on it, it goes, and then fucking rings around a hundred times. And the teacher's like, "What? I gotta I'm, now? I gotta fix that shit? Yeah, you idiot kids, you broke it. I said be gentle. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I'm picturing a map like that. I, other than like on my phone, where I'm like, I, I don't know how to get here. So I had, at one point, a book that was essentially the region of Ontario. Okay. And it was as thick as a dictionary. How close are these pictures getting? I, it depends. You turn to one page and it would be like a zoomed in version, but the roads are the same. So I don't really know how helpful they are. <laughs> you have to have a starting point. You have to know where you are at the beginning. And then you have to trace yourself like the worst game of GeoGuessr ever. In order to get to your destination, is this a coffee table book or is this like a helpful book, like the like a for getting places? It was it was supposed to be a helpful book for getting places. It but sounds I, like a coffee table book. I wouldn't. So it was like it was like a, it was almost like a pamphlet. Oh. And so it was book in size, and then it folded out. Where and like all these individual pages. Go back to 1968. That's where you get it. But like. How how do you even get trees that size? It's <laughs> what the fuck? How are you getting a tree to make a page that big? Ah, redwoods. Oh. That's why the Amazon rainforest is fucked. That's because we had to keep printing maps of Southern yeah. Ontario. <laughs> We're still recovering from the great map production <laughs> of 1980. Boy, the guy who invented the map is a fucking asshole. He's probably real pissed knowing that we just got that shit on our phones now. His carbon footprint. Is the size of Bigfoot's footprint. Oh, for real. What a dick. <laughs> um, how did you feel about the Listerine aftercare uh, for like the when he raw dogs the girl? Um, do you think that's good for aftercare? If you have 99% alcohol Listerine, I bet you you might as well just use isopropyl and light it on fire. Yeah. Also, that's going in your pee hole. Hence why it's so painful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's that's, going right in there. You might as well just stick your dick in Tiger Bomb. Yep. Also, also, it's called flesh-eating bacteria because it eats the flesh, not the skin on top of that. <laughs> it's already in you. <laughs> and if, like, Listerine could kill, like, this kind of bacteria, don't you think we would just be bathing in it? Yeah. 
I would take a Listerine bath and deal with a little bit of stinging if it meant I wasn't going to get fucking necrotizing fasciitis for the rest of my life. The thing is, I wasn't even I wasn't even considering that. I was just thinking he like raw dogged her, and he's like, "Well, I don't I don't want herpes," and just like <laughs> just Listerine he was on the dick. about disease. Yeah, I was, I was thinking like STDs. I wasn't uh, even. I, I don't think uh, for STDs, Listerine is an effective. I, I think it's for bad breath, actually. Yeah. I, I don't think you're supposed to pour it onto your genitals in any... No, you use it for no, that. There's no context. And maybe to disinfect your electric razor after you shave your asshole. Maybe? Maybe. But you gotta you gotta, you should be pouring it onto your razor and not dipping it in, I think. That's, oh, no, no dip. Yeah, yeah, no dip. Unless you got like a barber side thing. Yeah, fine. At this point, get a new razor. <laughs> they come in packs of three or... Just like wax your ass. Wax it. Wax your ass. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. I'm going to stand if you by care, it. If you care about having a, a hairless ass, wax it. Yeah. Especially if you got this disease because there's a whole scene where she's shaving her legs and she flays she the skin right off. She rips her own leg wide open. Three times. That's worse to me than the fingering scene, and I meant you know to say what? that earlier. You know what? I do. I was like, oh my god, the whole time. Yeah, that fingering. That's like a one-time oopsie. She goes back for more twice. Yeah. How do you not notice the first time when like a strip of skin comes off? And she must not have. I thought because she's crying during, and so I thought that maybe she was traumatized and trying to find like some semblance of normalcy, even yeah. though she was you know dying slowly and she knew it. Mm -hmm. But nah, she freaks right out the second she sees her leg. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't look down while you're shaving. You didn't. You didn't feel oh, like a piece uh, of fish yeah. come off your leg. And yeah. And plop into the water. Ugh. Also, the noise it must have made when it plopped into the water. Yeah. That's yeah. not the sound of shaving cream. She, she could just easily just like put that back on, though. That's what skin yeah. grafts are. <laughs> that's how it works? Yeah. It's just that and Gorilla Glue. It really is. That's, that's the medical science. That's my understanding. I think it's important to note that that guy listerined his dick off. But then he wasn't worried enough about getting sick to... Try and climb up a rickety ass ladder in the oh. reservoir just to poke a dead body in the water. Oh yeah, that, there's no reason for him to need to poke that dead body. That fucking scene. Was, and that idiot. That scene was too much for me. Gets halfway down the ladder and pokes a dead ass body for just cuz. Yeah, like there was. What's he gonna do? Identify the corpse? Like, exactly. That's what I thought he was like. Is he gonna flip it over to see if it's a guy? He, I need to see it's who the it guy. Is. It's the guy. Look at him. He's, Look at his he's head. He's a burned corpse in the yeah. water. It's the guy. It's for sure the guy. Why are you probing? Hey, that's the guy. Oh, what? All of my friends are getting sick for seemingly no reason. I don't really know what we did. Oh, we drank the water. Yeah. We drank the water right in the cabin. And where am I? I'm at the water treatment facility where we get the water from. You know what's funny? The whole time I've been watching this, like from the start of the movie, like, so how are they going to get sick? Mm -hmm. First, I'm like, oh, Dennis bit that kid, that guy. That's how they get it. You think that's nope. it? Oh, this, he's spray, spraying blood all over the place. That's how he gets it. That's a good example, and yes. But I've, then, yeah, no, they totally were drinking that water. With they the were drinking the water the, the whole time. You didn't notice that it was getting zoomed, like the glasses full of water getting zoomed in on? I I didn't. You know what? I did, I did mm. notice the one, like, knife. There was, like, a knife sitting on a counter, and she picked it up. Yeah. And they made an effort of her going, like, stink. And she yeah. picked it up, and I was like, okay, well, what's the knife for? Uh, there was that. Um when the chick gets Karen gets sick, mm. he gets her a glass of water and it's got like a lump of something floating in it. I don't think I, I I'm not going to lie. I got a little <laughs> high before I watched this movie. Um, I don't think I noticed that, but that I should have noticed that looking back on it. Yeah. Now. So one of the things that like when the first time I watched it and I was quite young that I was confused by was I couldn't figure out like what made specifically that main character sick. Um, in hindsight, it's, well, he, he bangs sick chick raw. That's number one. He gets all watery in that reservoir. That's oh. number How do you not drink that? You for sure are. Yeah, that He's goes, like half drowning. He went in. It's, it's up your nose yeah. and your ears. It's, his mouth was wide the fuck open. Water goes everywhere you don't yeah. want it to go. Pick a hole. Water's going in that when you're in water. Yeah. Good luck keeping your butthole that tight. And they drank the water at the cabin. And they made a point of like, so there were plenty of times I just... In my age, I didn't notice. So I made a point of like really paying attention to the possibilities. And that's, and so like, yeah, she's fucking, everybody takes a shower. 
mm-hmm. the only person who didn't. And let me tell you, I'm going to go off on a tangent for a second. It wouldn't take a flesh-eating disease for me to have a bet where I drink nothing but beer for an entire week at a cabin. <laughs> I would do that shit in a heartbeat. Ask me nicely. That's what cabins are for. You don't even have to put money up. I dare you to drink beer for the rest of this trip. Okay? <laughs> Absolutely. It's... Well, we were driving to Tobermory and I was just drinking wine in the passenger seat of the car. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yikes. Um, there, so there's that. And then also worth noting, the only person who survives is the one who put a mask on his fucking face and yes. social distanced in a cave. Yes, he did. That's... Again with the COVID, right? I, I, yeah, I. He was the only one, and he, yeah, he had the fucking thing on mm-hmm. his face the whole time. Yeah, that's hilarious. Just a rag, a thick rag. I, I better I, than nothing. I think I also want to note, um, any like rural area uh, with like running water, mm-hmm. it's like well known that water's dirty. Yeah, you... I would have. Why didn't they just bring a case of water? That's a great question. Think ahead a little bit. Right. I wouldn't want to drink dirty cabin water. No, no. I I had a hard enough time. I was at a cottage up north in the town, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to drink that water either. It did after I, you know, got thirsty. <laughs> but damn, son, uh, that cabin barely has anything. I was shocked that it had lights. <laughs> <laughs> I would have laughed if you would have had to spend everything by candlelight the yeah! whole time. <laughs> The entire movie is just shot by candlelight and fireplace. Oh, yeah. All of the scenes take place in front of the fireplace because of the light levels. <laughs> Everybody getting close to the fire. Uh, don't be a dick to Bert for making a giant ring of fire in the woods. That's amazing. Mm. How do you not do that when you're camping? Right. Just light things on fire. You're there. Um. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. You don't need more of an argument than that. I, I liked how the main character became like a, an angel of death about halfway through the movie. Just like putting people out of their misery, like, <laughs> yeah, he did like with a shovel, yeah, and then, and then he like smokes the deer, and he's like, "All right, I know what to do here." Mm-hmm. Just beats the deer to death, <laughs> and then there was another one. Um, he yeah, blasts Karen for sure yeah. when he's when he sees her fucking no lip face. Yeah, and she's like still breathing. He just and it's yeah. not even just one shovel; it's like clunk, clunk, yeah, clunk, a lot of them, clunk. Uh, he bats Winston in the head yeah, he for does. not being super attentive to the fact that he's covered in blood. Oh, fuck. Also, I forgot all about the dude with the harmonica. <laughs> There's a, the, in, in, in the scene where yeah. with the party, the, the beer drinking party where the, that no good creepy cop is, that, is plying that alcohol on piece children. Piece of shit cop. Uh, there's a dude playing the harmonica. Mm-hmm. And... As, as he's there, there's like a thing on the radio and the dude yeah. covered in blood is like, oh, shoot, shoot him it. on sight. So like, oh, fuck. Well, I better shoot him on sight. Yeah, yeah. The one guy takes a swing with his guitar. Yeah. And the dude ducks. And he ends up hitting the guy playing the harmonica, which lodges the harmonica down his throat yeah. like, horizontally. When have you ever seen that in a movie? N- cartoons. That exactly. That's a car- and then it's just him wheezing. And yeah. like, you can see the harmonica in his it's, esophagus. It's very melodic, his we- wheezing. Yeah, it is. Um, but then he makes like a point of like falling over as a uh, right at the end there. Yeah. And he's still choking on harmonica. Yeah. It's worth noting that when that fight begins, the dude with the guitar stands up because he's got a weapon. The guy with the harmonica stands up and begins playing the harmonica <laughs> menacingly. <laughs> Like, it's fucking West Side Story. <laughs> He's just inching forward with the harmonica like, oh, you're in trouble now. Vum. Vum. <laughs> yeah, he, he totally, he totally Why does. Why would you? You have a harmonica. You're the the most effeminate person in that band because of that. Yeah. It's either that or you've been to prison, but he's a small white child, so there's no way that's the case. I was going to say, yeah, the only time a harmonica is even menacing is, is in a prison, but yeah. it's almost never. It's always like very solemn and like, yeah. I got the blues. Wah, 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 wah. It's menacing if it's the last thing you hear as you're walking to the electric chair like in the Green Mile. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Then you're like, oh, that's the devil's <laughs> music. Ooh, that sets the tone for the next five minutes of this film. <laughs> A.K.A. the remainder of my life in it <laughs> oh my god um yeah yeah i wrote here the dude falling off the old ladder into dead man soup yeah dead man soup dead why man are you soup. getting anywhere near that you put your friend who you wanted to bang super bad mm. in a shed because you didn't want to deal with her shit yeah but i'm gonna get within five feet of this body just out of curiosity also it's 20 
<laughs> it's 2002, I guess. Yeah. Which is, this, oh, I mean. Who's using a wooden ladder? Who's, Who, it, <laughs> there hasn't been a wooden ladder made in a hundred years. That's, why would you get on that ladder? That's exactly why it fell apart, because it was that old. Exactly. Like, if it, like, sure. <clears throat> I, I could understand if that's like a little metal, like, ladder going, climbing down. Mm-hmm. I get it. All yeah. right. You got to take a look. Yeah. And then maybe, like, the bolt falls out or something. That's a legitimate mistake that you weren't expecting. Yeah. But you climbed down Jesus's ladder. <laughs> For his bunk bed, yeah. and, and 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 you fell in and go, oh fuck! No, you should have been like, well, how, how could this have happened to me? I've made my mistakes, and into the into yeah. the dead man soup. You, you go. immediately accept it and don't panic because it's your own goddamn fault. Uh, um, one thing that bothered me though, when uh, cause like so the uh fucking what's his name Bert, he mm-hmm. goes. Back to the, he goes out to get help, and and was it no, it wasn't Bert. No, it was the main character. It was he's the guy who goes to get help, and and then Dennis like does that crazy karate. Yeah, yeah. And then it was Bert in that scene. It was, and then yeah, because he was him. driving with the truck, and then they go into like the the chase scene with the guns. What was in that box that that one guy was carrying? I um, have no idea. Like. What if it w- what if they had the antidote because it's like an illness that comes around all the time mm. and it's like they're just trying to help but like they blew that dude's head off because he was sitting there with a gun like he, he the guy goes to open the box too uh, but then he gets shot and he doesn't what? he doesn't ever open it what fucking scene is this and why don't I remember it um so they're chasing Bert through the woods yeah and they get to the cabin they open the door and Bert's just sitting there in the chair with the gun and he goes to shoot him yeah and they blow his head clean off and he's just got a box and so there's two guys they right. both have guns and then there's a bigger guy oh and he's just carrying a box like a wooden box and oh like, yes what was in that box that's a fantastic question. they never show the box after that they never the, the box wasn't in any of the other scenes that I can remember. Okay, first of all, just to call your concern, there's no way that they had the antidote because they weren't there to be helpful. Yeah, well, that much was clear, but like <laughs> I was just like, what else would be in the box? Like a bunch of needles uh, for... Dude, maybe it's like a his, his like a fetus or it's, something. Like it's, They're backwoods hillbillies. He's keeping his little brother alive or something. I don't know. It's It seemed like uh, in like, was it Pulp Fiction? No. With the briefcase? Yeah. Because there Pulp is that. Fiction? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's like kind of like that. Like what was in that box? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing, like, with Pulp Fiction in that case is that they open it and it's something shiny. Yeah. Right? But it defeats the purpose if you never actually see it opened. I don't know what could possibly extra shells. I don't know. Yeah. He doesn't, that guy doesn't really say much. He's got, like, two words. He's just holding the secret to eternity. That's Pandora's box in there. You don't want to open that shit. Honestly, it could have been. You would never know. I, no. I don't think you ever do see. Oh, man. Um. I, I saw, I, I was really baked and I, I, I saw like some parallels between a couple other movies in this one. And the only one I can remember is just like the scene where they're like checking each other over for like mm-hmm. the illness kind of reminded me of uh, the thing. Yeah. Where they do the scene with the blood. Yeah. 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 There's, and, but there was another scene and I cannot. I know what you're thinking about. Rem- it does, I just can't. It's the same damn thing though. It's the ending of the movie. Where the old, where the guy comes out and he's like I lived and they shoot him up, mm-hmm. um, isn't that how the first like Dawn of the Dead ends? Like the guy like runs out and then people shoot him because they think he's a zombie, but he was like the last. You mean the one from like the seventies? Yeah, the the very first one. Shit, I'm I'm certain that's how that one ends as well. I remember they mm, did they not get in a helicopter on the roof. Of the mall. There is no mall in this one. In Dawn, it is in a mall. Okay, then this is like, this is the one, this is the black and white one that they... Well, that's they, Night of the Living. They Yeah, they did, they did the oopsie where they didn't have, uh, they didn't copyright it, so now it's like public domain. That's, mm. that's the one I'm thinking of. That's probably Night of the Living Dead, which would be public domain anyway at this point, because it's from the 60s, and public domain, you got like a 50-year span if you don't re-up the license. I thought I thought it was after the person dies. It's 50 years after that. That could be true. That could also be but, true. But um, I think he, like, the name of the movie was <clears throat> slightly different from what he, like, copyrighted, so it's technically public domain now. I'm not even that, yeah. But, that'd um, be the first I heard of that, but I, I believe f- you. I feel like that's how that movie ends as well. There are a couple movies where the last surviving person gets shot up because of fear. Yeah, yeah. 
I think it might also happen in Day of the Dead, but that's I wouldn't be much surprised. later. Now I'm trying to think of examples and I can't. Also, the the check scene is from like a zombie movie as well. Ah, which I think, funnily enough, is also from Dawn of the Dead, but the remake, the Zack Snyder one from 2006, where they're checking for bites. With, I think. with Ty Burrell? Yeah, with <laughs> fucking Ty Burrell. Back when I liked him. That that was really weird because I, I definitely saw that movie when I was a kid. And then yeah. now I had no idea, but yeah, he's like some douchebag. And then he's, you watch him on yeah. Modern Family. He's like a gentle dad. <laughs> fucking the nicest bumbling idiot yeah, dad Yeah, but then you see him with hookers. And, yeah, and he goes, I run a tight ship. And it's just nudes around him. <laughs> and he's he's banging the chick oh in the mall God. and he turns the cameras all on so you can see himself in about 15 screens. That's right. That was him, too. Yeah. Oh. He also, in that movie, predicts his own death. Does he? Yeah. He says, do me a favor to the main chick. Uh, if I ever turn into one of those, do me a favor and blow my fucking head off. And that's exactly what she does later. Yes. Yes, she does. Yeah, and then right they, square in the forehead, and it's then they beautiful. steal his boat. Um, I found out that the sound mixer for Cabin Fever uh, actually had necrotizing fasciitis. Oh, and it took thirteen days of constant intensive care to save his life. Well, that's ironic. So he's real close to the source material. <laughs> they could really consult him for yeah. any questions or quells they might have. I hope they probed his brain on the realism. Um, speaking of the looking for help scenes, uh, I don't understand. If I go, if I'm looking for help because my friends are sick, and I go to a, a farmhouse, and the first thing that I see is a woman in goggles beating the shit out of a dead pig. Guess what? I don't need your help. Yeah, yeah. I'll find help elsewhere. First, that pig wasn't dead. I do. It, that was it was much, by the end. That was a very much live squealing pig. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, no, I I'm I'll be like, hmm. Sorry, wrong house. Yeah, definitely wrong house. I would definitely not go in that house. I don't care how how, how much help I need. Mm. And then also, and I don't know if this is like a time period thing. It might be. <clears throat> but they just walk into somebody else's empty house. Yeah. And they fucking look around. And, and dude grabs beef jerky and eats it. I did I did not understand that. And like the weird person she like walked in and there was already like her friends there like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I fancy seeing you in strangers' houses. Great. And, and now I'm pretty sure that's the same dumb bitch who goes for a scenic canoe ride after the fucking the shit hits the fan, which is so... Mm. But I don't know... If, when was it acceptable to walk into someone's home and, like, it's cool because you yell hello? Everybody saw it on uh, on that, that Michael uh, Michael Moore documentary. Yeah. <laughs> that was they, it. They saw like, oh, in Canada, doors are open. Mm. So that must just be cool to do everywhere. Yeah. Hello, we're filming a movie. And also, you're in the same area where you just watch somebody butcher a pig out in the open. Mm -hmm. And then you go, it'll probably be fine if I just walk into this person's house mm -hmm. in the same area. I won't get shot or murdered at all. The other going for help scene I, I did enjoy was when... I already know. It's well, Yeah, the... the so he's like he's just, it's dark. He's just walking up to the house. He looks in the window. There's like a naked chick laying on the bed. It's like oh shit. And then tits? Um, immediately to his left is an old man with a shotgun. Like <laughs> was he waiting there for a peeping yes! tom to? to this he's just lying in wait like a vigilante. <laughs> this is part of the games they play. <laughs> All right, you get naked out in front of the window. I'll be outside with a shotgun waiting for a stranger to show up. Oh my god, for real though. That's what gets them off. For real, it was like it was zero to sixty. Yeah, reactions to voyeurism. <laughs> I could only life. get hard if I threatened somebody for looking at you. <laughs> Hurry up, Vivian! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> You're not yanking yet. <laughs> I fired the gun. We've got five minutes. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I uh, there was also there was a scene where he gets dropped off at the hospital. Yeah, and he just kind of like they kind of flop him onto the pavement. Mm -hmm. There's a dude in a wheelchair rolling up, <laughs> and he sees the dude covered in blood, and he does an immediate just 180 and just starts rolling away. That's I, the fastest I've ever seen somebody in a wheelchair physically change their mind. Yeah, I I laughed so hard. Just, <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. My situation's pretty bad, but it ain't that bad. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and just, and then 
seven of the most confusing minutes yeah ever ever movie ever made into a movie until he wakes up what i'm what i got from that is that because he was unconscious when he showed up he was having some like nightmare on elm street hallucinatory dream sequence because there's no way there's an actual person in a bunny suit performing surgery in this hospital. I don't I don't care how far deep into Montana mm. you are. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh He was asleep and he was he was if he was awake, he was having a fever dream. We're at a PBE. We got this rabbit <laughs> rabbit costume from the kid from the guy who comes in like helps the kids on Easter. Yeah. Um we wanna throw that on? Yeah. Put that put that rabbit hat that rabbit hat on and then blow out this candle. <laughs> Oh, you can't. Perfect. It's fine. It's basically an N95. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That and then it's like and and then the the cops show up at at that that convenience store mm-hmm. and you're just like what's going on? What the and there then that's that. It's lemonade time. It's lemonade time. That lemonade is apparently mighty fine. You couldn't taste the blood from that guy in that lemonade? That that guy like Eight feet down the river. Yeah, you mean it you, wasn't far down the river, man. It was not. Now far. they do a fade. They do a fade, but it ain't that far, so I don't care. And also, like blood, water, it's they're two different colors. They are. You're gonna see that, and um, you they also, don't really mix all that much. No, not not really. Mm-hmm. And when they do, they turn the water a murky mm-hmm. maroon color. Uh, I, but like, if I knew. That what I was drinking came from a creek? Yeah. I would not be paying money for it. No. It seemed, it seemed like they had a lemonade sand set up there for business. Mm-hmm. They, were, they weren't just giving it out. It was just, let me, do you have some sort of paperwork as to uh, the source of your product, your <laughs> material? Where do you order from? Is this, 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 is, this is crick to table. <laughs> <laughs> crick to table. We're trying to make the vegans happy. Yeah. No, uh, I don't care how much citric acid is in that. I wouldn't drink that. No, no. It, I might as well just put my fucking face in that water and drink it. Just, it's the same damn thing. Uh, makes me think of that show, The Monsters Inside Me, where it's uh, just parasites uh, for... Like, you're just gonna... Look, if you think you're gonna live your life and not get a parasite, it's gonna happen. It is eventually, they're, yeah. They're literally everywhere. If you own a cat, chances are you already have one. I got three, so I'm good. Yeah. Uh, my my, my odds mess. are great. Yeah. The fucking... I just want to make note also of the fact that uh, in a place where there's flesh-eating bacteria, there's definitely going to be parasites in that creek. Oh, I yeah. don't even care if there's yeah. flesh-eating bacteria in that creek. There's something else. Oh, for sure. There's like a fish. There's a fish disease. Or yeah. There's there's like little... those little parasite things, the fucking bugs that eat the fish's tongue and then oh, become the tongue so God, that they the can bay. eat forever. The fucking yeah. Bay. That's a real fucking animal that yes, does that, and it's disgusting. Yes, it is. Oh, oh. that's gross. Um, all of our friends are getting sick, and the skin is coming off of them. Let's make chili. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense. Why would you choose chili as the food in this situation? Well, because it's because like you run out of run out of fillings for the chili. Like, oh well, why don't we just scrape a little off her back? Ah, good. Because it looks the fucking same. Yeah, it'll have the same texture as the mushrooms once they're cooked. <laughs> Ugh. Mushrooms get spongy, man. They do. I imagine skin does the same thing. Well, I hope we never find out, but <laughs> I do hope we do find out at the same time. Ew. Yeah. It's funny. We wrote down very similar things. I got Winston Olsen's name right there. Leg hole finger in all caps. Yup. Ripping her skin off with the fucking razor. Yup. There's... Um... I have a problem, and this is a personal problem. Uh... If you go to a place and the bathroom fixtures are old and rusty... Uh, chances are the water coming out of them isn't uh, going to be great to drink. Mm, I don't even have to be a plumber to tell you that. Yeah. But as a plumber, I can tell you that. Yeah, if the water is going to touch the same thing that's rusting, I'm yeah. probably not going to drink it. And now, it's not the worst thing that you can put in your body, but it's not great. No. The- um, <laughs> It's probably a pretty easy way to get tetanus. Not a bad one, I would imagine. Although, I think it has to enter your bloodstream, but it's not too far off. You're shaving with it. Yeah, for real. Um, just a point of note: if if you're if you open a tap in a cabin and the water comes out brown at first, boil that shit. Mm, let that run. Even just let it run for like ten. Let minutes. it run and then boil it anyway. Oh yeah, because that's the same pipes that the water's coming out of that you're drinking. Mm-hmm. It starts like that, 
Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. And I then, saw that in a school once, and I was like, oh, <laughs> these kids are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> the education system's really letting them down. <laughs> Yeah, the the brown stuff's all fluoride. That's like it's oh, that's it's, it's just it's just you're in Ingersoll. You. you live in Ingersoll, basically. Yeah, there's a lot of fluoride in Ingersoll. They have so much fluoride in their water in Ingersoll that they can't drink it out of the tap. The dentists are out of business, eh? Oh, fucking, forget it. <laughs> this is the whitest teeth in the country. Bulletproof gums. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so cabin fever. Yeah. Out of ten, what are we giving it? But for me, eight. Eight. Okay. Um, I would easily <clears throat> put it in my top ten horror movies of all time. Interesting. Okay. I okay. don't know where I would put it, but it's one that definitely comes to mind when I'm considering that. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I got to give it a solid seven. Mm -hmm. I I I enjoyed it. Having this been my first watch through, that is above average. Yeah. It, it like it wasn't a bad movie. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a great movie. Mm. Did have its moments. I have a very soft spot for uh, semi-low budget but well-made horror movies, mm. especially from, as I said on the last one, that era of time. Fair. The, the late Fair. 80s to early 2000s, um, most horror movies that had some kind of studio backing eventually are pretty sick. This is one. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, it was not bad. I... It, it, it's just, it wasn't really the kind of horror movie I would be like, hell yeah, that's a horror movie. Mm. But it was, you know, it was a horror movie. It's, I would call it a body horror movie. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I I, I, I normally tend to go for like dudes running through the woods and like trying to lop your head off. I mean, well, that did a little bit happen. It did. It did. There And like anytime you can fit hillbillies in. Yeah. And the hillbillies are upset. And there's not a horrible rape. You know what? That's important to say. That in this movie, there's plenty of weird hillbillies there that are. do weird shit, but none of them rape. And that's that's what I really like. Yeah. That's what I really like about about this movie. It's what I hated about <laughs> Straw Dogs. Yeah, fuck Straw Dogs. I was really upset that that came highly recommended. So mm. I was like, well, if Tim Deegan is recommending it to me, <laughs> I'm going to grab that on Blu-ray. I popped it into my, my, mm. my PlayStation, fired it up. You know, movie's like, okay, so, all right, we've got some hillbillies here. Hope they don't do what they're going to do. Um, <laughs> I hope they don't do okay. what they're going to do. Oh, hus hus husband's leaving the wife at home? Uh oh, mm. hillbillies are coming. Mm. Oh, they probably, they're probably just going to talk. No. No, they don't just talk. You can't leave hillbillies alone in a room. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. You just can't. You, it does, you can't leave one alone in a room. You can't leave a dozen alone in a room. Every rape revenge movie is just boys don't cry with a different soundtrack. I, it's just, it's just not, it's just not. No, it's Hillary Swank getting bent over a pool table. And it doesn't need to be in a movie. No, it doesn't. That, that's, that's my, that's my, my two cents. If it, if it's in a movie, I, I'll turn your movie off. Yeah. Or and I'll... this is the thing that I've been saying for a while, which is you can achieve the same effect, uh, from alluding to mm -hmm. or implying a rape scene than actually showing it for 15 minutes of your total runtime. Yeah, you know what? If like if your movie is, if you're dead set on yeah. that being a part of your movie... You're in the writer's room and you're like, it needs it. If, if for whatever reason you're justifying that for your movie, <laughs> for sure. Like, you, you don't, we don't need to see it, but no. like, okay, imply it. You can have just the sounds of sobbing and a guy looking menacing, and I'll feel the same. Yeah, I, I, I I'll feel the exact same. Somebody follows somebody into a room and a door slams closed. Yeah, like that. and then this is like a okay. slow zoom on the closed door, and then to black. Yep. I know what happened behind that door. I don't need to see it. Exactly. Yeah. No, I don't. It's the same as listening to somebody have diarrhea. <laughs> you're not. Like I'm you're well aware like, of what yeah. it sounds like, and I know. I know already. Yeah, I we get it. There are plenty of other indicators. Yeah, they're really, really... <laughs> you're just spoon-feeding it to the audience, and the audience yeah. can get a fork and knife and cut their own steak up. Yeah. It's fine. Gah. So, <laughs> I mean... I'm so I'm, I'm just you know I'm happy that that didn't happen in this movie. Yeah, it, it just proves my point that there doesn't need to be that. You don't have to have... Like, not all hillbillies are going to rape. 
No, no, not all. Now of them. some are. That's the, that is a fact. They, mm-hmm. uh, from what I've seen uh, in the movie Deliverance, <laughs> uh, any like honestly, un- unfortunately for the southern states, yeah, Deliverance has really set the tone for what I think of when <laughs> I think of the southern states, and I don't want that to be. I don't want hillbillies hiding in the woods, squealing like pigs. Yeah. I don't want that to be what I think about. I don't want to be worried about taking a wrong turn off of I-95 when I'm going to Florida. Yeah. And that's what I'm in for. Uh, uh, so, well, I guess what I'm saying is, like, we need something. Um, America needs to do something. <laughs> let's let, let's see a movie about where... About these depictions of hillbillies. Yeah, let's see a big budget movie where hillbillies are like the heroes. Mm-hmm. You got Lawless, but that's about uh, um, prohibition era alcohol running. But it, it's not dissimilar. It's not. It's not. It's not a. It's not really a horror movie. I'm either. pretty sure there's no rape in that one. I'm pretty sure. Well, like 99. percent I'm probably not going to watch it anyway. It's got Shia LaBeouf and Tom Hardy in it. I would recommend it. Shit. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to watch that because Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Um. He's good in it. You know, he's good in everything. And Tom Hardy is amazing. I don't care what anybody says. Huge I, fan. I've only seen Venom. I don't know. I really appreciate that he's overcome his lip structure. Yes. And become a celebrity. <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. Um. Yeah. Uh, so that was the movie. I. I, 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 I. Do you have anything else? Like, do you do you have any more points to make? We gotta pick one for next week. Yeah, we do have to pick one. Or next podcast, but probably yeah. next week. Um. Look, I. And I mean, if it's gonna be my turn, it is. As much as I was just saying, like, dude running through the woods, cutting people up, I can't pick one. Mm. I'm kind of excited about the new uh, Texas Chainsaw okay. by Netflix. I don't know if that's going to be out. I don't know when that right. does come out. So I'm going to pick. Well, I'll backburn that one, and then after this, look Absolutely. up the release date. Yes. we Yeah, we should probably be able to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's an integral part of this. Uh, going with something on Netflix, though, because uh, yeah. I, f- I feel like a lot of people are going to be able to access it easily, and it's a great movie that you probably haven't watched yet. You raise a good point, because I did have to provide you with a link to Cabin Fever for you to watch it. And, like, look, I've got a fire stick with two programs that scrub the internet for links to movies, mm-hmm. not one for Cabin Fever. I think it's too old. There's Cabin Fever 2, mm-hmm. Cabin Fever 3. There's Spring the- Fever. There's- Spring Fever, and then there's another one I've never, I don't know, and then there's the remake. Could yeah. not find the original. I'll tell you about Spring Fever. Uh, I think in the first 10 minutes of a movie, of that movie, a kid's dick falls off in a toilet. Sounds like Planet Terror. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a very similar vibe. Um, I, I figured those movies were low budget. And had nothing to do not with Eli Roth at all. Not a thing. That's that's what I imagine. It's they were... the exact same as Hostel for him. Ah, bummer. He did Hostel 1. I think he would, had a little bit of involvement in the second one. And then it just, everybody shit the bed. Oh, boy. And the rest sucks. Well, I mean, we'll do at least the first one at some point. Yeah. Uh, but this next one, I, we're, we're going to, I'm i I'm going with Colorado Space. Okay. Because I haven't seen it. You Mm-hmm. Oh, you should see you guy for those listening at so home. So good. The face that Matt is making at me right now. Oh my god. It's disappointment, excitement and surprise all at once. To be honest, I'm surprised I haven't forced you to watch it yet. It's that good. Uh you and my friend Joe both. Okay. And we were approaching on territory where I hear so much about a movie I no longer want to see it. This isn't one of those kinds of movies. No, because it's Nicolas Cage. It and is Nicolas Cage. I've made it very clear. My feelings on Nicolas Cage. Absolutely. And they're nothing but positive. Well, um, and this is one of those movies where Nicolas Cage does Nicolas Cage yeah. 100%. <laughs> I'm just going to make that noise every time he gets brought up. I fucking love it. Yeah. It's, it's, I can see the fucking face. <laughs> it's the same. I, it's his upper even, teeth are more visible than his lower teeth. It's not even his face. It's his the, eyes are wide it's as the fuck. Drawing. Yeah. The yeah. drawing is what I fucking yeah. see. Yeah, which is from, I believe... Vampire's Kiss. I think it is. Which is a movie where he angrily recites the alphabet. He, yeah, the he does. The whole alphabet. And he, he, I never misfiled anything. Not once. Not one time. Does it, he's also ripping his clothes off, isn't he? Yeah, he does that. He believes he's becoming a vampire, and he just... Mm. I think he knew that the movie was going to be shit, so he's like, well, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> and 
like every once in a while a hero comes along <laughs> and he, he takes a hero. bad movie and he goes, yeah. I'm a Nicolas Cage this. <gasps> yeah. And, just and you get an bees. hour and a half of that. Yeah. Just the bees, not, not the bees, the man. the fucking bees. Whew. A real human being <laughs> and a real hero. Uh, so watch Color Out of Space yep. before That's you listen happen. to the next podcast. Um, or don't. And be totally out of touch with everything we're talking about. Not understand the more subtle points that get written down. And uh, have the entire movie spoiled for you if you're somebody who dislikes that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You could get get at us on Twitter. um, uh, At MattG124. Mm -hmm. At the JPocalypse. Forever. Um, and uh, not for Forever is not in the handle. It's just that's going to be my name forever. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly, when you change it, it's... No, it sucks. I know. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I learned how to pl- I, I learned how to spell apocalypse because I was sick of having to Google it to figure out how to tweet at you. <laughs> That's how I learned how to spell it. Well, I, was I really real fucking sick of it. I'm really happy that I could provide some education for you. Hey man, now, uh, it doesn't have a Y in it though. Yeah, I learned that. That's how mm-hmm. I learned that. Yeah, I just had crazy deja vu about that part of the conversation. So that was weird, but mm. here we are. Whenever I have deja vu, uh, I always get the sense something bad's about to happen. So. Mm. That's you living in the Matrix. Yeah. That's what that is. You see the same cat over and over, and you're like, ah, somebody's coming in with guns. I saw something on the internet. It was like, you know how you live in the Matrix? You've never seen your neighbors taking the the groceries. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I was like, yeah, you're you're right. I've never never seen anybody brush their teeth either. That's fucking weird, man. Isn't it? (laughs) I hope your friends have dental plans. Yeah, in the Matrix. Uh, don't forget to check out darkroastcult.com where I'm sure you'll be able to listen to this podcast and buy some enamel pins and, Ooh. and uh, high quality. It's worth noting enamel pins. I'm oh. not shilling. Uh, I have one on my hat at the moment by choice mm-hmm. and I wear that shit to work and it's still intact. Bless you. And I, I, I work very hard. <laughs> I wear them on my head, and I don't work very hard, and they're they're just fine for people who don't work hard too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can check it out. Uh, use Dark Drip to get. Uh, I think it's five percent off or something like that. It'll say it'll say it on the website. Dark Drip. Dark Drip is the coupon code to use. That sounds like a disease in your penis. It does, um, but also it's coffee. You know, it reminds me mm-hmm. of, reminds me of coffee. And I don't want penis. a disease in your penis to remind you of coffee. Look, when when we do Planet Terror, I got the Dark Drip. <laughs> When we do Planet Terror, this is this is going to be most of the conversation. Yeah. It's just dripping and, and grossness. Ugh. Bubbles. Undulating things. Ugh. Yeah. So you seem so stoked to watch it already, so I'm happy that you brought that up. So there's a lot As of, like a for sure, we're the, watching that. Oh, oh, dude, you can't. we can't not do both of those movies. And That's then, true, and then given call the this name podcast, of the podcast. Yeah. Grindhouse, it just doesn't... <laughs> By the way, I was hoping they were going to do more. I was hoping there was going to be like... Two more Grindhouse movies coming out yeah. by two different directors. I, I was hoping that was just going to be a thing, because that was really good. Well, what ended up happening was they made Machete. Yeah, that wasn't so good. No. I didn't care for that. No, it wasn't. I also don't care for that being tied into the Spy Kids universe. I don't know how to feel about any of that shit, and I didn't know about it, to be honest. Uh, in, in the Spy Kids, he's he's their fucking uncle. It's and, Machete, though? And his, his name is Machete. Oh, my God. Yeah. Which one of those came out first is the question. Spy Kids came out way, way, way before Machete did. Oh, so they just took that and ran with it. Same director. As if the Spy Kids, like, they stopped being Spy Kids. And then Machete just goes on a fucking, a kill bender. For real, though. All right. I mean, at least it's not the other way around. Like, it's 12-year-old kids hanging out with a fucking murderer. Actually, you know what? I think it's, um, I think it is. Because I think he, he gets, like, a job... Like a an agent job or something at the end of Machete or something. He gets, he like works for the government. Isn't that isn't that something? I don't know. What we're we're gonna figure that out as well as that fucking yeah. fetus titty sucking movie. Uh, yeah, for the love of God, where is that? I don't know. We're gonna, I'm I'm gonna have it for the next podcast. I need to know. I'm gonna I figure it out. Combed people's brains about that shit. I spoke to two different people about it, which is a lot for me, <laughs> and they had no idea. Well, I've been Googling it, and I think Google's getting concerned, um, because I'm not even getting the same results anymore. (laughs) I'm going to turn my filter all the way off, and I'm just going to go for it, I think. Just not a bad idea. You're going to get a lot of hell. It's it's like, I've found it before. I've found it before, Mm -hmm. but the name just slipped me. Mm. I could picture the cover. I could picture the cover of it. 
Maybe but you'll just have to describe the cover on it, Google. It's, it's two dudes being like, oh. They're, they're startled yeah. by the fetuses. Yeah, absolutely. One of which sucks a tit. Yeah, it does. It, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. That, that's the only part of the movie I can recall. <laughs> Other than like, he like, I think this guy like stops on the side of the road to have a piss while he's transporting these jars. And then like, he comes back and the jars are broken and the fetuses are gone or something like that. Ooh. There's like one like crawling down the road or something. Oh my God. Um, I hate it. Yeah, it's it's. I'll watch the shit out of it, but I hate it. <laughs> when I find out what it is, oh boy. Uh, anyway, so thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh, do you have any last words for the podcast? Gotta pee. Bad. 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 Bad.